Hello CIS and welcome to the end of the search and sort demo. Uh, we've already gone through all the sorting, well it's time to get into some searching. I'm going to go through two algorithms with you today, a linear search and a binary search. Uh, we'll start with the linear search. The linear search is an algorithm that uh, doesn't require a sorted list in any way. Uh, it will return the index of the item that you're looking for through your list. And if it cannot find it, it'll return a negative one instead. It makes sense to be able to return uh, the same data type no matter what kind of information you get, because some programming languages force you to do that. Python's not one of them, but many do. Um, so a linear search is pretty simple. Start at index one, and if it's there, great, return index or the start at index zero or the first item. If it's there, return where it is. If it's not, move on to the next one, check and see if it's there. If it's there, return it. If it's not, move on to the next one. Go all the way through the list until you get through the whole thing. And if you get through the whole thing and you couldn't find it, then return a negative one. So let's start going through every value in our list. All right? And our goal is to figure out if uh, well, actually, I don't want to go through every value in our list. I want to go through every index, sorry, in a range function because I need the indices uh, from 0 up to the length of our list. Okay? And the index is going to hold what index I'd like to return if I get there. So my goal here is to see if our list at index happens to be equal to uh, the item that we are passing in to search for, or value, or whatever you want to call it. And if that's true, I want to return the index. Okay. However, if it's not, I don't want to return negative 1 right away. I want to return negative 1 once I'm done with the looping activity. I've gone through every single element to prove that it doesn't exist. That's the most common mistake when it comes to this as an indentation mistake. So I want to return negative 1 if I don't get there. So remember, as soon as I return from a function, I don't actually finish it out. So if this index is the uh, location for the item that I'm looking for in any one iteration, it stops doing the loop and I don't finish out any of them. So it seems to work out just fine for that particular uh, purpose. So here, uh, we can try that out. Um, it doesn't, again, require any kind of sorted list, so I can kind of go through and search for it um, in any way that I want. So if I wanted to perform a linear search um, for a, um, ooh, instead of, let me just do this. We'll get rid of this um, thing here, and we'll just make our own list. So we'll go our list equals a list, and we'll go one, two, four, three, Seven, nine, eight, two, one, seven, nine. And we'll just call that our list. Okay. And my goal is to say print out, because remember it's a return function, uh, a linear search for a three on our list. Okay. And if I run that, okay. It prints out the index 3, because guess what? 0, 1, 2, 3, that's where it found the first 3. Let's say I'm looking for a uh, 9. Okay. It's going to print it out at 12, because 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is where it runs into the first 9. So it seems to be working just fine. Um, this is a, it's a decent algorithm, especially when you work on an unsorted um, lists, um, but is by far means not extremely efficient. The best way to make um, searching more efficient for particular items is to already be working with a sorted list of data. And that's where the binary search kind of flourishes. So let's get into the binary search here. Uh, the binary search is a search algorithm that, again, we're assuming our list is already sorted from least to greatest or greatest to least. Um, in which then I can kind of look at it more like a dictionary or phone book. So I start thinking about just opening it up straight to the middle of the list and identifying, well, is the element I'm looking for at the dead center in the middle? And if it is, great, return where we're at. If it isn't, then I can identify, well, 
is the element I'm looking for in the right half or in the left half? Because I know it's sorted, so is it above what, I'm, what I just found or is it below what I just found? And if it's above or below, it means I can eliminate half of the list. And then I can again search the middle and go through that and identify is it top half or bottom half and then throw out half the list again. And so each time what I end up doing is searching for this just in the middle of the list that I have, but I can get rid of half of the list every time I go through it. So the algorithm that I'm going to go through is, uh, I'm going to try and keep it pretty simple. I like keeping indices of first, okay, and I make it equal to zero, and last, and I make that equal to the len of our list minus one. So what that does, it gives me an index or a value called first, which is the very first index available to me to search through, and last, which is the very last element to search through, and then I come up with a middle index, which is basically the average of first and last. That'll give me the very middle index for me to search at, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go through a looping activity, and that's the conditional activity that I want to go through, um, because I want to check to see, first of all, is the value I'm looking for at the mid? And if it is, great, but if it's not, then I want to keep kind of partitioning the list. And I'm going to increase the value of first if I need to, or decrease the value of last, but there is that sense where I may not find it, and first and last may switch spots, and first may become bigger than last, or last may become smaller than first. And I want to make sure I stop the loop on either one of those cases. So while um, our list at mid is not equal to the value, and first is less than last, okay? The reason I want to keep those going like that is because if I find it, so if this isn't true, I don't want to stop looking. And if for whatever reason I didn't find it and first happened to become equal to or greater than last, then I want to stop searching as well because I'm not going to find it in the list anymore. And so if the value I'm looking for happens to be greater than our list at mid, okay, because I already know it's not equal to it, what I want to do is change the value of first equal to mid plus one. And what that essentially does is cuts out half the list, okay? So I've taken the first and I've moved it way up in the list to be exactly where that midpoint was, plus one, because now this is the lowest value I should be searching for it for at. Otherwise, I want to take last and make it equal to mid minus one for the same reasons, just in the opposite direction. And then I'm going to recalculate the mid, first plus last divided by two, And we're going to keep repeating the process. And one of these two things is going to cause this to become false. Okay, one of them. I don't know what it is, but one of them is going to cause it to become false. Now, if it happens to become false because this isn't true anymore, because our list at mid is actually equal to the value, that means I found it. Okay, so if our list at mid equals the value then I know I found it, and I found it exactly at mid. However, if it's not, then I want to return a negative one, okay? Meaning I didn't find it because this condition became false. Finally, first kind of caught up to last, or last caught up to first, one way or the other. But again, this is only going to uh, work on sorted data. Okay, so if I've got our list, I would have to go through and first sort it. So let's say I did our list dot um, our list equals sorry a merge sort on our list okay so it allows me to kind of look for it okay so if I do a quick printout of our list I'm going to keep it small just to these 10 items um, what you'll see is that it sorts it and then it'll tell me where it's at so it sorted it told me the nine I did a linear search again I want to do a binary search Okay, and let's change that up, run it, and it still says it's at 12. Okay, so we have the list sorted, and it seems to print it out at index 12. Now if I tried searching for another value, let's say I searched for a 5, okay, it'll run it, and it'll say it's at index 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
and it's found the item without any issue. So there are the um, searching algorithms that allow you to work with. The linear search is efficient if you don't want the data sorted. Uh, the binary search is extremely efficient if the data is sorted, but it, again, it only works if the data is sorted. Otherwise, the left half and right half, when I start shifting these uh, values around, first and last, they're kind of meaningless if I'm not looking for uh, searching through a sorted list. So that kind of wraps it up for the um, searches and sorting. So hopefully that kind of clears some things up again. Um, for the assignment, you'll be doing some searching and sorting. You'll be required for the uh, insertion sort, selection sort, and bubble sort, and then to work through uh, a linear and or binary search. So be on the lookout for that. And if there are any questions, please feel free to put them into the um, discussion form, and we'll uh, take care of it there. Thanks.